Um, it was five classrooms that were totally transformed and we made sure that every teacher and every student in the school had the chance to experience the whole project. The museum day was amazing. We had all the seventh grade classes tra transform their classrooms into a large connected museum. Students presented all aspects of their work. When you first walked in, the students handed you a badge as though you were entering a Nazi-controlled area, and then some students explained what each badge meant. In each room, students had contracted artifacts and models representing the concentration camps. It was very emotional, and it was very difficult to see many of the images that were put together. In this open we could finish from a lease of 100 to 200 from Berlin, and then with the ashes, they dug it on the ground. There were displays showing their knowledge of geography, statistics, timelines. There was a wonderful display of the history of the swastika and how it had gone from different, through a, it had been in different cultures. Graphs and slideshows and all kinds of presentation materials to show what they had learned as a group, as well as the independent research that each student was responsible to create. Students knew that the assessment was to create a museum artifact, and they had been to several museums on the same topic, um, and they had seen exactly what kind of artifacts are in a museum. They knew that their performance task was to create the same kind of museum experience for the people that would be coming to visit. Use a charge. We talk a lot in our school about authentic assessment and having an authentic audience. So rather than just creating an assessment that is just for the sake of assessing, create an assessment where students know exactly what the purpose is for doing it. And there is a purpose beyond just seeing what they know and testing them. But they actually see that what they're learning is important in order to be able to teach somebody else. So this was an exa the best example that I've seen um, for a long time of that kind of assessment. And I hope that we'll see a whole lot more of that. Mouse is a memoir on two fronts. On the first, it's the story of a concentration camp survivor from World War II. On the second front, it's a memoir of the author, Art Spiegelman, um, who wrote and illustrated Mouse, and his coming to know his father and um, maturing in that way. Um, the story connected to our students on many levels, um, one obviously being that everyone has heard the older generation in their household um, sort of talking about the past. So everybody could relate to Art as he told the story of his father and, and some of his frustrations and some of the confusing points that he had. The graphic novel format really helped to spark the students' imaginations um, about the historical context and made something that was very difficult to understand, um, the Holocaust. Um, made it real and um, on a very personal level. Many of our ESL students also found it much easier to read um, because there were so many parts of the story that were supported by these beautiful illustrations that Art Spiegelman drew. Because of this sort of comic book format, our students couldn't wait to read each chapter of Mouse and even through their enthusiasm um, sparked our study of Mouse Volume 2, which had not really been intended as part of this unit. When we started this unit, we had two essential questions in mind. Um, how can the study of literature help us prevent making the mistakes that happened in the past? And how do the powerful experiences of our lives affect the way that we express ourselves? Um, these are pretty complicated questions that students were ultimately able to answer um, because they had studied mouse um, so closely. When students uh, were ready to start studying the Holocaust, the teachers really wanted to make sure they understood the true scope of this moment in history. And the terrible events that took place during World War II could be best understood through literature. ELA teachers felt it was more important for them to understand the full picture of Nazi terror. And I believe that was exhibited not only by their collaboration with other ELA teachers, 
but also with the social studies teacher, the science teacher, the math teacher. Um, class 701 and 702, we recently finished a book called The Devil Arithmetic, and um, the, the numbers stand for um, different um, types of um, things that people went through in their life or going through in their life. And the first, the first, um, the first part of it is a letter, so, um, meaning what culture you are, black, white, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Spanish, just like that. And, um, people, not everybody, but some people, they wrote what their numbers um, stand for because we had a chance to do it on our own. And this was similar to the tattoos that people had? Yeah, similar to the tattoos that The thing about this was that they, the Jews and the prisoners thought that they was cursed with the number because when they was captured. So the Jews decided to make it as a positive thing, like to represent themselves. <laughs> That's what you're saying. How propaganda is because most of the um, most of the Holocaust had to do with propaganda. Most of the Germans believed that Jewish people were evil because of propaganda. How technology was integrated into uh, this unit, and as a result of this great collaboration, the entire school witnessed some of the most amazing learning that took place this year. And it's, and it's a true tribute to our teachers and their dedication and our students for all their hard work and commitment during this, uh, this particular unit. And I, and I have to say I'm extremely proud of our teachers and our students. Uh, a writing, they had to come up with the construction of an artifact, and they had to come up with a presentation. The lessons were tiered. Uh, so that we could have multiple points of access to the content by various learners. Uh, and then the activities themselves were tiered so that they included uh, reader's theater. Kids played uh, various parts uh, or the construction of artifacts of various types. For uh, more visual learners, we had all kinds of activities that involved the smart board or the construction of PowerPoint presentations. We have a variety of processes that we used for the purposes of teaching the unit that went and from small group processes to whole class to uh, uh, fish bowls uh, to readers theaters to the actual uh, construction and installation of an exhibit. We used choice boards, we used centers, we used stations uh, and a variety of research activities along with that, web quests of various types we did for the Holocaust. Uh, to the use of a variety of uh, different techniques from alpha boxes to um, Ishikawa diagrams, as there's one behind me here that looks at the ways in which uh, manpower, materials, methods and machines uh, are used by societies to produce uh, a specific result, and so they use this form of analysis among others. All the stuff that we're 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 we have, what we call as Who's that? No, who's that? 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 that? Who's 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 that? The students were able to learn about the Holocaust for the first time in an interactive setting. Um, we had a wonderful tour guide who really got the students to ask a lot of questions and really use their critical thinking skills um, to kind of learn about the Holocaust on their own. Instead of, you know, the tour guide really didn't say everything. She questioned us a lot. Um, she asked the students what they were thinking about the artifacts that they were seeing. And it was very neat to see the connections that the students made throughout the unit to that first trip. They would reference artwork, um, sculptures, things that the tour guide had said. And they were able to you know, remember that experience and use it as they were learning more. One was called the Jewish Museum for all Jewish people. And then we went to the Jewish Heritage Museum, which was a memorial for the Jewish people during the Holocaust. The highlight of that trip was 
being able to listen to and meet a survivor of the Holocaust. So our kids listened to the survivor talk for about an hour, which is pretty amazing. Um, we've never seen our students sit so quietly. Uh, but they, you know, they came back, they told their friends about it, and they were just very much in awe and uh, of the survivor. And, you know, you could tell how much respect they had for this person. At the end of the unit, we were able to organize a trip for our entire seventh grade to go to Washington, D.C. Um, and one of the things we did there was go to the National Holocaust Museum, that they were able to make connections to what had happened in the United States history as well. So one of my students came up to me at the museum and, you know, he expressed that, so glad we learned about this because now I know that African Americans were not the only slaves. And um, it was such a powerful thing for him to be able to make that connection and for our students to really be able to understand that it's so important to study literature and study history so that we don't make those same mistakes because they've seen it you know, happen over and over.